All right, another example, same problem. Uh, let's put that back in standard form. This time we'll solve it using an integrating factor. I'll do all the steps. You can be a little bit more brief on your homework if you want, but just to, to uh, re-emphasize things that we did in class, I will, I will do out all the steps. So the integrating factor method says we multiply the whole equation by an unknown function sigma of t. So I put in a sigma of t in all those places, and we desire that this left-hand side become an exact derivative. Uh, an exact derivative of the product x times sigma. So this would be the dx dt times sigma. If we want this side <coughs> to be the x times d sigma dt that would come about from the product rule, we need or we require that d sigma dt equal negative r1 sigma of t. This is a homogeneous linear first order equation for sigma. We can solve it by separation. d sigma over sigma is negative r1 dt. And so sigma is e to the minus r1 of t times a constant, integration constant. Uh, we saw in class that the integration constant doesn't matter if I multiply the whole uh, equation by the same thing and it has an arbitrary constant in it, that arbitrary constant will just come out. So for convenience, we may as well set c equal to 1. And then this left-hand side will become d by dt of e to the minus r1t x equals, on the right, s times e to the r2t times e to the minus r1t is e to the r2 minus r1t. So now we are ready to integrate both sides because we have uh, chosen sigma cleverly in order to make it be an exact, the left hand side be an exact derivative. So Let's do that. Let's integrate both sides. We get e to the minus r1 t x of t is, when we integrate this left-hand side, we get s over r2 minus r1 e to the r2 minus r1 t plus c, undetermined integration constant. I shouldn't call it an undetermined because that will confuse you with the method of undetermined coefficients. It's the integration constant. And now we divide both sides by e to the minus r1t, which is the same as multiplying by e to the r1t. Divide by e to the negative r1t, multiply by e to the r1t. x of t is s over r2 minus r1 e to the r2t plus c e to the r1t. We have the same solution we had last time, the general solution. We have the same initial condition, and so when we satisfy the initial condition, x of 0 equals 0 implies that c is negative s over r2 minus r1, as we saw in the last video. Therefore, x of t is s over r2 minus r1 times e to the r2t minus e to the r1t. And if you like, as we saw before, since r1 is greater than r2, you can multiply top and bottom by negative 1 and get the equivalent representation r1 minus r2, r1t minus e to the r uh, so same same solution, just written in different ways, if you like. 
for numerators and denominators to be positive. So we did it by variation of parameters. We did it by in, uh, integrating factors. We get the same solution as expected. Uh, just a walkthrough of two different methods.